Hello, I'm Peggy O'Neill and welcome to today's Facebook Live. It is Thursday, March the 3rd, 2022. So welcome. Thank you for being here today. And if you are here, please say hi. And uh, if you're watching this on replay, please put in hashtag replay. Love knowing that you saw this. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, put them in the comments. Whether you're watching this live or on replay, I will answer them all. So thank you again for being here today. Today we're talking about how do I learn and listen to the language of the universe? How do I learn and listen to the language of the universe? And as you know, every week in, uh, in uh, with the Facebook Lives and our Facebook community answering the call, what we're doing is we're answering the call really in two ways. One, some the longing that we sense in our lives uh, that something's missing or there's something more that I can do with my life or be in the world. That's the longing to know our essential nature, to know the truth of who we are, the, that we are consciousness, awareness, source, one being, made of the same stuff, if you will, as everything and everyone else. And then there's a second piece to that. Each of us is here to express uniquely that consciousness that we are. So here in answering the call, we're always addressing both of those uh, not necessarily every week in, in each Facebook Live, but throughout all the calls. We're addressing um, both our essential nature, come, uh, answering the call to know that, to live that, be that, and to uh, know what we're here to uniquely express. So, yay, you did make it. Thank you for being here. So again, today, how do I learn and listen to the language of the universe? And we're going to talk about what, what perspective to take to be able to do that, the capacities, like our internal skills, abilities, capacities, kind of our muscles, if you will, that it takes to do that, the challenges of listening, and why accessing this intelligence, being able to listen to the universe, which by the way is us, we are the universe, we are our source, so really listening to ourselves in that way, why it's so crucial for the times in which we are living. We, Everything is different. Everything is different. So, how do we learn the language of the universe? Now, when we talk about learning, the first thing is to, to, to have a different... Uh, oh, hi, Sharon. So glad you're here, too. The first thing is that we don't want to think about learning in the way that we did when we were in school. Often with learning, at least for me, I learned to like pass a test, to get through the course that kind of learning, just do what I had to to learn. It wasn't, a, for me, I, I didn't, wasn't engaged with school like to become wise or to become more fully who I could be. I was over there to learn, memorize, get the material, do what I needed to to get the grade. So I'm not talking about that kind of learning. I'm talking about the kind of learning like the, uh, where it's a kind of knowing, like I know English or we know how to tie our shoes or drive a car. That kind of knowing that it's so in our being, so in our knowing that we just know it like we know our name. Uh, yeah. And a, a little story, and that we want to take that on like it, you know, that it matters to us because of who, what it can do for us and the universe. I don't mean like what it can do for us in a, uh, it's all about me, I don't mean that but in that I can become more wise. I can become more fully human. One time I was leading a, a course in New York City when I was working for another training company and uh, I was in a bathroom stall and two young women that were in the course came in and they were talking to, to each other about the homework from the night before. Everybody had homework. This was the second day of the course. And everybody had homework and these two women were talking to each other. Did you finish the homework? No. Did you finish the homework? No, but they'll never know. And at first I chuckled because the way this course was designed, we would know. We were going to ask everybody to, to see if they did their homework because everyone had promised they would do their homework before they went home the night before. And so at first I chuckled. I go, yeah, we'll find out. And then my heart sank because, because they were it, it being in the course like any other course. Like, oh, okay, I'm going to do my homework because the teacher, the facilitator told me to do my homework rather than this course and everything we do here and really everything in life 
is about living our lives more fully. So my heart kind of sank because that was the conditioning that most of us have been in around learning. And, and so we want to shift that too. So if I want to learn the language of the universe, it's like, I want to learn language. Like, I really want to know this. I really want to know how to interact with with, with um, the universe in that way. So it's a way of relating, building a relationship with the universe. Let's see. Yeah, so I want to learn it so thoroughly, thoroughly develop this sort of wisdom and relationship with the universe. Now, the perspective to take. What's the perspective to take? So first is to be the perspective of one being one of source of that I am one not a source of separation I mean sorry not a, a perspective of separation why because then I'm gonna listen in a different way if I still see myself as a separate being listening I'm only gonna be able to hear what's in alignment with my separateness but if I align my listening with who I truly am oh I'm one with everything I'm gonna hear in a different way I'm even going to be able to hear things. By hear, it's not necessarily any sort of sound. I'll come back to that. Uh, um, in fact, I didn't think to talk about that, so we'll come back to hear. What do I mean by that? Um, so, um, um, yeah, so if I'm listening from a place of oneness, it's, it's, I'm going to hear from a different place, a different perspective from my essential nature. So, uh, so if I'm listening from a place of who I truly am, source, I'm listening from, as happiness, peace, fulfillment. I'm listening as that. Rather than often with separation, it, we're, we're needing something to feel better or to understand or to uh, get an answer or to find a new job or get a new career path. All of that may happen from the perspective of oneness but I'm listening from the place of, I want to fully express what this one being wants to express through me, as me, rather than I'm listening for how do I live my life better. I'm still gonna live my life better over here, but it's in the context of consciousness source living through me, as me, rather than I'm separate. So I hope that makes sense. You can let me know if you have questions or if it doesn't make sense. Because also, so part another part of pers the perspective of listening in this way is just what I said, is that we, for us to each of us listen from the perspective of, I'm a unique expression of source. I want to know that, my unique expression. Not like my Peggy, but my like um, consciousness, unique perspective on the world. I'm bringing that sort of listening to this. I mean, I, I am a unique message and I want to know what in my heart is my unique genius, my brilliant um, way of being or contributing or we don't know. So we listen from a wide perspective of that uniqueness, uh, from that place of uniqueness. And the universe is always sending us information. Quantum physics is even proven that we're one energy field and all of this energy is information. All we are is information. Think about it. All the cells are exchanging information all the time in order to, to be a, the, the perfect community. Always exchanging information, doing whatever it takes to support each other so this being, this body stays alive. So that's the universe too is giving us information. We're sending out information. And so, again, knowing, oh yeah, the universe is always communicating with me. The information is always there. That's a piece of the perspective. So, so I will talk about hearing and listening. So what I mean by hearing and listening, I, I talk about it that way, but it could be a sense, like an image could come to you, or some sense like, like oh, some sort of knowing that comes to you. Now it might, once you kind of feel it, then it might you might sense a whole message, but you're probably not going to hear it as words. But you might. I mean, some people do hear guidance, the sort of listening as words. Some of them is just kind of a whole overall, like you just read a paragraph and then you kind of remember the paragraph. Lots of times, it's, that for me, it's like that. It's like just this sense, and then I then I can then verbalize or go write what it was. But it comes more as an overall 
perspective or overall movie, and then I have a sense of it. Uh, let's see. And so we always want to be ready with that. Again, that's part of the perspective, too. Be ready to listen to that information. Melissa, uh, not Melissa, um, Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, wrote a, another book called Magic. Not necessarily recommending the book, but she said in the book that one time she got an idea for writing a book from the universe, and it just came to her, but she never did anything with it. And a few years later, she was at some sort of book event and met another author, and they were talking about each other's books, most recent books, and she realized that that author had written the book of the idea that came to her. Of course, the other author wrote it from her own perspective, her own story, what, what she uh, came up with as a result of that idea. But Elizabeth Gilbert passed on the idea because she never did take action on it. So she knew what happened is the universe has lots of ideas and information floating around and it's going to lots of people. And she didn't take that idea, it went to someone else and they took it. So that's what's happening in the universe. And she calls it magic, which it is, isn't it? It's like a mystery, and it's this magical wonder, 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 wonder that's going on. Okay, uh, oh, so hearing, so it could be, you can, could actually hear some words. Uh, but it's just more of a sensing often, or you might hear like you hear a commercial and some, something catches your attention. So, so, uh, uh, Peter Levine that I've been studying lately, uh, calls it orienting. Like we hear a, a twig break in a forest. Well, if we're all alone, we'll stop because we heard it. We'll orient. We'll kind of look that direction. What is that? Is that something to be afraid of? Is that something for me to pay attention to? So it's that that we'll notice in a passage in a book or in a movie, or maybe a friend says something, and it, ooh, that caught my attention. Those are the sorts of things that we're listening for. And sometimes they're sounds and words, sometimes they're just this, these senses, these messages, these, these messages. All right, now, capacities. So what are the capacities, kind of the skills or abilities that we want to cultivate and bring? Hey, Tina, it's great to see you. What are the capacities that we want to bring? So one is trust, everything I'm talking about. Trust, I'm a divine being. Trust, I am the universe. Trust that the universe, of course, is expressing through me and wants to guide me and, 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 and um, um, help me know what to express and how to express. So trust. Then be hungry to know. So like I said about those two young ladies in New York, they, you know, that's what broke my heart. They weren't hungry to know about their lives, hungry to live their lives. So it's that kind of hunger. Yeah, I want to live my life. So I'm going to really be paying attention here. And be curious. Be curious. Because these sort of, what comes to you, these messages in various forms, it's not, most of the time, it's not going to be like a real clear cut. <laughs> real clear cut. So you keep a journal or something. You stay curious. You write down notes and ideas and then, it will come. It'll evolve most of the time. Sometimes it's real clear, like Elizabeth Gilbert had a clear idea. She just passed on it. So sometimes they are real clear, but lots of times um, uh, we just stay curious and then it comes together more like a puzzle later. Then we stay open. Again, for what I said, these ideas or the senses can come any place, anytime. So we're staying open as best we can all the time. Staying alert, kind of like a tracker in the woods. So, you know, the, what, we've, what we've heard of indigenous trackers, they were really sensitive to all their surroundings and knew how to read animal tracks and animal, uh, they could tell if a, sh uh, a hoof had been somewhere, if they'd been drinking water because they were so sensitive to their environment. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about sensing in a, in a moment. Uh, so, but it's like that. It's like staying open instead of like writing off, a, a, writing off something. If it caught our attention, or or, or, um, or we can sense something in a certain way, we want to pay attention to that. And so we're staying open to all of that, even if it doesn't make sense at the beginning. Um, and, be and believe in what I'm saying here, because it's always talking to you. So whether you're listening or not, <laughs> the universe is always engaging with us. So we can believe that, and that helps create with the opening. And then be receptive. Be receptive all goes together being curious and open that's a, that's part of being receptive and let's see let's see i'm looking at my notes obviously uh oh and then we want to develop our ability 
uh, um, uh, Eugene Ginlin and then Peter Levine and a lot of people now have, have drawn on the work of Eugene Ginlin about something called the felt sense. And they all use it in a particular process for the most part, various kinds of processes. And I'm going to offer it today that the felt sense is also just a way to be in life where we're more sensitive to life. A lot of us really relate to life as we're talking our we're talking heads. We use our heads and our brains and our thoughts, and then our bodies just kind of carry around our brains. We don't really, we haven't probably consciously thought of that until I said that, but that's how most of us treat our bodies, treat our lives, and said, oh wait, I've got this whole sensitive body being that's interacting with the environment all the time. So being sensitive like the tracker in the woods, not sensitive like you're, you're incapable of, not, not, I don't mean like an, the, the overly empathic people that, that are, you know, their books written about, I'm not talking about that kind of sensitive, but I'm, I'm saying like more like tuned in, really paying attention, being more sensitive instead of kind of closed and, 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 um, and just focusing mainly on thoughts. Notice our emotions, our sensations. So I mean felt sensations, so those aren't emotions. And, some, and they can be physical sensations, we want to be paying attention to that, but there's something else. They're, a, they're, a, they're, a, they're just an overall sensation. I'm, we'll, we'll do a quick exercise in a minute to show you what I mean. So we want to be developing that and stay sensitive to the sensations of our body. Now the challenges of listening, uh, it can, uh, first, everything I've said, you know, just to even know this and then to be open to it and then follow through with it. Uh, but it can be harder to listen if we're anxious. So if we're anxious, we're fearful, we're nervous, we're grasping, it's going to be harder because that's also out of alignment with our essential nature of oneness, which is peace and love and happiness. So the more that we can align with that in our, in our feeling body, in our, the way we relate to other people and align our activities, our emotions and thoughts, then it's going to be a little easier to listen because now we're all aligned with, with everything. Everything's in alignment. So just know that doesn't mean that ideas won't come to you when you're anxious, but that may help you then to, to remind yourself to, you know, I'm really nervous today. Okay, just stay more on alert. I mean, be, realize that you may not be as sensitive to messages coming. So, um, but especially, but, but to do, uh, you know, do the other uh, exercises we've talked about before, or what you probably know about uh, calming ourselves down, being more peaceful so that we can actually uh, be more receptive. Um, it can also be challenging because there, there's not a process. <laughs> it's not if everybody would just follow this five-step process, it doesn't work that way. That's part of the challenge because everybody has a unique path to know their unique path and unique expression. So when we work together here and in the praxis and one-on-one -on -one clients, we're, we're always, I offer a lot, and then each person, you know, then what you'll do, you take the parts that work for you and, and, and pay attention to which elements are most appropriate for you. We each, we each have a unique path. So, uh, so that's why you're not hearing me say step one, step two, step two, three. Uh, and so you want to pay attention to what, how do you listen? You know, what, you know, what, uh, uh, you know, what do you need, not need, but what do you want to focus on that helps you be more open or develop the capacities that I'm talking about? Uh, so, so each of us has our own how-to process. Um, and then the other challenge to listening is that most people don't know who they are. We don't know who we are. And we might know conceptually, but to live it in our being and to feel it in all our being, uh, yeah, the great majority of people aren't. So. Um, so that makes it also challenging to hear our true calling. But we might hear something that's in alignment with our separate self. That's fine. That's great. And that may be what you or other people want. But to know our true calling, then we really want to be standing as who we truly are and knowing that and listening that way. Um, let's see. Oh, and then another reason, too. I mean, I've had clients in the past that wouldn't explore even before I knew about non-duality, just even traditional leaders in management wouldn't explore. Uh, I've had exercises in the past about finding your purpose. Now, our purpose is to be happy. Now, 
our unique expression of that purpose. That's another thing, a unique expression. But at that time, I was still doing some purpose work, and uh, I had a, one client wouldn't do it because he was afraid that if he really connected with this purpose, he'd have to quit his job. So, so, so it's everything I'm saying uh, that to be hungry, to really want to know my true calling, and I can always choose not to follow it, or it doesn't all. It doesn't always mean we have to change careers, change jobs, change families. No. And so it's, again, it's the trust and the believing and trusting the universe knows what we're here to live out and listening in that way. Okay, so now we'll do the exercise. exercise. Before we complete with, you know, why this is crucial for these times, uh, we'll do uh, an exercise. It'll just take a couple of minutes. It's an exercise on felt sense. So, uh, so if you would... If you want to do the exercise, uh, just take a couple minutes, then, and this will give you a basic understanding of felt sense. So make yourself wherever you're sitting. If you're driving and listening to this, don't do this, okay? But if uh, otherwise, wherever you're sitting, get yourself as comfortable as possible sit, sitting in your chair. Just get comfortable. And then as you do so, Feel the way that your body makes contact with the surface that's supporting you. Feel the way that your body makes contact with the surface that's supporting you. So like your, your hips and buttocks on the chair, or maybe your back on the chair, your arms, if they're on the uh, arms of a chair. So feel the, way, feel the way your body makes contact with that surface. Now, sense into your skin and notice the way your clothes feel. Sense into your skin and notice the way your clothes feel. And now, sense underneath your skin, underneath your skin. What sensations are there? Mm -hmm. Now, gently remembering these sensations, how do you know you feel comfortable? And what physical sensations contribute to the overall feeling of comfort? What physical sensations contribute to the overall feeling of comfort? As you become more aware of these sensations, do you feel more or less comfortable? And does it change over time? Sit for a moment and, and enjoy the felt sense of feeling comfortable. Okay, so that's what we're talking about, about felt sense. You notice it's not emotions, it's, it's not, we're not really paying attention to the specific feelings, but an overall sense, the sense of being comfortable, the sense of being in our bodies, paying attention to the sensing. And um, I, I need to attribute that exercise to Peter Levine in uh, his book, Waking the Tiger about trauma. I think that's the name of it. <laughs> I don't have the name of uh, the book in front of me. I think it's called Waking the Tiger by Peter Levine. So it came from that book. So that's a that's an idea of what I'm talking about, about felt sense. We can develop it from that, just really paying attention. What does my skin feel like? My clothes feel like? Feeling like what it feels to sit. So you can do this often or do it in other areas and other ways. You're washing dishes, things like that. You can pay attention to all your senses. 
And once, as we become more consciously aware of our body and our sensations, then it's going to make any experience more intense. We're actually here to be experiencing life and for it not to just be this calm, which we all know it can't be this calm, steady uh, uh, surface, although a lot of us think that's what we want. But we really want expansion and movement, adventure. And so this is one way too, to expand our experience of life. And notice that the experience of comfort came from your felt sense of comfort, not the chair. Often we say the chair is comfortable. Well, not the chair is comfortable. It's your felt sense of comfort. That was what you were experiencing. Okay, so any questions about that or anything I've said so far? And then I will talk about why learning this listening and learn and listening are so is so crucial to the times in which we live. Any questions? Okay. If you have any, go ahead and post them. So these times. Uh, well, even before the what's been happening in the last week in Europe, you know, as we know there's been a lot of disruption in the world, uh, and, and a lot of disruption in our lives. We know things are, are changing. I mean, they're always changing, but now it's really in our face. It's really like, okay, something's really happening. So the opportunity for us to, to engage with that open energy and, and ride with that open energy, like riding the waves, ride the open energy. And so the times are really a mirror of what we're being called to do. Believe in something larger than ourselves. We see that with Navalny, who's been in prison off and on in Russia for many years, because he's standing for what matters to him lar larger than himself. Zelensky, oh my gosh. President Zelensky of Ukraine, standing for something larger than himself, freedom. So when I'm talking about that with us, with you and me, I'm not talking about standing up in a war zone or going to jail that sort of thing, but what I am talking about is that we, um, that to, to, to stand for something larger than ourselves means to stand for something larger than our finite being desires, than our separate self desires. We think our separate selves, self desires comfort and ease and, and, and we get complacent. No, that's not what, that's not what our, that may be what separate self wants, that's not what we want. That's not what our essential nature wants. Our essential nature wants, yes, the foundation of peace and happiness and fulfillment, and then to express that as wildly and as passionately and as lively, I don't know if that's a word, as alive, as lively as we can. And so it's really being shown to us, oh, this is the time to stand for something larger than ourselves, which means ourselves, larger than ourselves. To honor, I exist, I'm here, to be more than a finite being. I'm here to be the being that I am. The universe, consciousness, awareness, source, that's what I'm here to be. So to stand as that, live as that, acknowledge that, and then listen, because the universe will, if we let it, express our lives in that way as consciousness rather than the separate, finite, limited self. Consciousness expresses through us either in the limited, finite way or in the open, uh, abundant, allowing way that we truly are. And that's, that's what I mean by we're get, it's being mirrored to us to stand for something larger than ourselves, which means ourselves is something larger than ourselves. I hope that makes sense. Not the finite self, but to be the being we came here to be, our unique expression of consciousness. And so we can surrender to that possibility and stands for what matters, which is I matter, you matter. I encourage you right now to silently say to yourself or out loud, I matter. I matter. Not the egoic. I matter and the ego matters. We need the ego to live in this world. But the I matter in the sense that yes, I'm consciousness. I'm source. I matter. I'm a unique expression of this divine infinite being. I matter. So to stand for that. Be that. Live as that. Oh, and the other reasons that this matters, or why I think this is crucial for our times, is to develop that sense, that 
that's that intuitive sense of again listening that we we can constantly be in tune and intuit being with other people being with ourselves what we're what's next for us to say to do and uh, and then uh, trying to understand a note I wrote <laughs> and and to yeah well basically I'm repeating but to let consciousness express through us and, and we and then we'll know what to do next what to do next for yourself for all of us and we're all all all, all of this so that is uh, what I wanted to talk about today that is how do I listen learn and listen to the language of the universe we went over uh, how to learn the perspective to take the capacities the challenge of listening we went through a felt sense exercise are there any questions or comments about that okay well if you have any questions or comments after uh, this session please write them and I will answer them and uh, post them rather and next Thursday We'll have another Facebook Live. And Tuesday, I'm holding a special event. Uh, I mentioned it in yesterday's email newsletter. And it's Weaving Together, Prayer, Ukraine, Consciousness, Non-Duality, and Us. And it's next Tuesday at noon Central Time. And I'll post a Zoom link here. It was also in the email. And uh, there, uh, there won't be a recording of that. Um, and you're, you're welcome. You're welcome to invite anybody you want to. We're going to talk about all of that and it's going to be on on zoom and nobody has to register either okay so thank you again uh, for being here today and yes let's all of us let's all of us live our essential nature all out with freedom oh, that's another thing I, mean, I wanted to include anyway freedom <laughs> that's also big showing up that's a big reflection right now let's free ourselves from our constraints and live as what's possible the universe i believe is like, like real inviting us big time come on it's time to untether ourselves from this limited sense of ourselves free ourselves to live the lives we're meant to live all right Sharon thank you so much to absorb letting it in all right well I appreciate if you have any questions or as you have questions let me know I right, thank you again everybody bye wonderful to be with you today <laughs>